You know, in past editions of the trainer, we've talked about AC compressor troubleshooting. We've talked about testing the alternator, uh, even gone over power steering woes. The one thing we haven't really gone into in depth is something that all three of these systems have in common. That's the accessory drive system. And we're about to change that. Stay tuned. The accessory drive system is the system of components that takes the engine power via the crankshaft pulley and delivers it to the accessory drives that are installed to the engine. That's the AC compressor, alternator, power steering pump, secondary air injection pump is so equipped, anything else the manufacturer might have thrown in. It's composed primarily of the serpentine belt, the belt tensioner, and any guide pulleys that may be part of the routing system. Now the serpentine belts that are in use on cars since around 2005, 6, somewhere around there, they're made of a different material than the belts that were installed on cars prior to that. Uh, it's called EPDM, that's short of course for a big long chemical name I'm not even going to try, but it's a lot longer lasting. Drawback is it doesn't uh, deliver the same wear characteristics that we're used to seeing, the same inspection techniques that we use to uh, pass or fail an old serpentine belt can't be applied to this new design. Uh, in order to find out what the nuances are, I talked to two experts. Uh, we talked to Daco's Jay Swope and Gates' Bobby Bassett. And one of the first questions I asked, what do you guys see as some of the common mistakes that professional techs are making in servicing these new accessory drive belts? Well, from, from our, of course, perspective, in general, it's gonna be just in the, in the sense of, of noise, of drive noise. but. More specifically, probably what we see is just in how to diagnose and how to solve those noise issues in the belt drive system. And, and really that is, uh, there's, there's other failure modes, of course, that we, we deal with, with, with belt drive systems, but the number one noise, uh, or the number one warranty issue, or claim issue, uh, both in the OE market as well as in the aftermarket, is, is due to drive noise. Well, Pete, to be honest with you, probably the, the most common thing that we see is number one, the tensioner, uh, the technician just not does not view the tensioner as a replaceable component in the system. They view it as a hard part and it's not. Mm -hmm. Today, the belts and tensioners are made, are designed with the same life cycle and they're made actually to be replaced together. And so when, when the, the consumer or the technician just replaces the belt, it's already lived its life and so has pretty much the tensioner. So they place a new belt on that and three months later they've got another problem and it's typically forced to fail or the belt's forced to fail by the tensioner. So it needs to be inspected and replaced pretty much at the same time. Okay guys, how about this one? What is the most common tech line help request that your company gets? Kind of go back to uh, what we just spoke about because the number one uh, warranty concern uh, is noise on drive systems. Typically, uh, that's what's going to come across our desk as well. It is customer would call up and, and uh, say they have a certain application and they've had a noise and, it's, and they'll describe it and, and just ask, "What advice do you have for me to help solve this noise issue?" And, and so that probably is our number one call. I mean, we have of course calls on on belt effective links, you know, are they the right link for the application or maybe how to install a, a new stretchy belt. But but all in all, uh, in the majority of calls, it's going to be noise related. Well, we, we get quite a few. Uh, probably the most interesting one is we, we get a lot of comments. People call, I replaced my belt and it's still squealing. You know, not really understanding what the belt does in the system. Uh, it only has one job and that is to transfer the power from the crank to all of the accessories and it does that by forcing the belt grooves down into pulleys. Now that creates a friction. So and what uh, and so when I have a technician tell me that and you see this a lot of times up on IATN on how to quiet a belt squeal or no, uh, belt noise, they use tire chalk, they use WD-40, they use carbureted cleaner. Uh, and you can't do any of that because a belt is almost just like a tire. If you coat a tire with oil and you step on the gas, it's going to slip. And the last thing we want to do is break that belt pulley interface that creates that friction that 
you know, powers all those accessories. So, so that is probably the, the, the one call we get the most of is what, how can I keep my belt from squealing? Well, the first thing is to absolutely clean and inspect your pulleys before you replace that belt. Okay. How about some tips on the proper way to inspect an accessory drive system? Those on, on the, on the preventive maintenance, we, Dago would recommend that in, in the neighborhood of 50 to 60,000 miles, uh, you know, the, the belt system be looked at and, and, and specifically that uh, rib cracking. Rib cracking is a, a failure mode that uh, had, was normal for, for the older dry belts. And, but in the 2000 time frame for the OE market and in approximately 2006, 2007 for the aftermarket, the materials were changed in the belt uh, to, to a new polymer, new, new material. Uh, and so rib cracking is not as predominant as it used to be. So even though we say, yes, visually look at the belt, make sure there's no cracking or issues uh, in the belt ribs, um, you should also check belt wear. And so and you, we have a, a awareness tool, DACO's developed a tool that, that you're able to, to put down into the rib of the belt to, to determine if the rubber is still sufficient to, power, to transmit the torque. And, and that's really important. And, and I liken it to a, uh, uh, you know, tread on a tire, just as, as they would wear and be able to, to, to determine if the tires are fine. It's the same thing with the, the belt is that you would need to make sure everything's sufficient there. Uh, other things to look at is the uh, edge cords on the belt to make sure that you know there's no fraying of the tensile cords on the edge. There's no loose cords hanging out that could cause an issue. Um, other things as far as the drive goes is, is the tensioner, being able to just rotate the tensioner throughout its travel Make sure that it's smooth in rotation. There's no stickiness or, or catching going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, that's that the normal type of inspection that you would want to look at the drive. Um, another area that we would say is, you know, with the belt on, is run the belt. Look at how the belt tracks on backside pulleys. They should be centered. They should, if everything's aligned up and running smooth, you should see the belt tracking very centered in all the backside pulleys, not to one side or the other, you know, that could be causing an issue. And, and then lastly, even with the harmonic balancers, the dampeners that we have is to make sure there's no wobble, that, that, that everything in, in the system is smooth. Well, before we remove any belt, it's very important for the technician to uh, watch the system in operation. And what I'm looking for, what they should be looking for is the tracking of the belt itself, how it's tracking. Is there any noise coming from the system, maybe through, uh, misalignment or could it be from uh, bearing noise so we want to view the system in operation we want to watch to see how the belt's tracking is it tracking in the center of the pulleys you want to uh, watch that tensioner and if that tensioner arm is bouncing excessively typically that's telling you that the tensioner has failed now a lot of technicians today view that as normal it's not normal it's telling you i'm failed it's got to be replaced and 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 pretty much when we talk about the accessory belt drive system today the tensioner can be the root cause of many of the the problems associated with the system so it's back to it's extremely important that when they replace a belt at minimum they inspect that tensioner and probably they need to replace it at the same time and finally the biggie how do we find and isolate the causes of belt noise? That's right. And again, this is, this is a, a major uh, area for belt drives. And, and we, we um, in DACO have looked at really at classified the noise as, as really two types. One type is, is we consider as a belt squeal. And that's, that's a consistent uh, high pitch noise that occurs. And, and normally it's, it's, it occurs because of belt tension loss. And in other words, not enough or inadequate tension on the belt to be able to drive and transmit the, the torque of the pulleys. And so that that noise is, is occurred for tension. It can also occur if uh, say bearings start locking up in accessories or you have an idler that's locking up, you know, just just can't pull the load. So you got that, uh, that slip going on between the belt and, and the uh, pulley itself. One other area, of course, that can cause slip is, is fluid contamination. Uh, you can have, whether it's the power steering fluid or oils, engine oils. Um, another one that we always uh, get concerned about as a belt supplier is belt dressing. Uh, we, we know it's sold, we know it's out there, but truly uh, with today's EPDM materials, uh, you spray a belt uh, that ha uh, that's making noise with that type of dressing, 
it, it, it will quieten it. It's a lubricant. It will quieten it for a time, but then it, it actually be, makes the uh, surface of the belt more aggressive. Mm. So we, we totally recommend not using that. It, it's not a good source to be used for to quieten the noise. Sure. And so that's that's the squeal part. That's that's the slip area of noise. There's another area that we classify as belt chirp. And belt chirp normally is caused by uh, pulley misalignments, and it's an intermittent type noise. And it's something that is probably very predominant, especially as the belt uh, as the vehicle ages over time. Uh, alignments of pulleys can can uh, can be moved, and then you start getting this this noise occurrence. Um, other things that can cause uh, belt chirp is, is misinstallations. If, if someone installed a new belt and they got one rib off, let's say on a pulley, you know, it can that can cause a misalignment. Um, and so other things that happen again, the belt dressing will actually make it worse than better. Um, now tied to that, uh, what I would like to, to suggest is that um, we, we have a water bottle test that we would recommend and, and, and say, okay, technician, we have a noise. Yeah, we classify it in two different ways, but how do I know? What do I do to, to try to uh, go down the right path to solve the noise issue? And, and so what we would recommend is why the belt is, is making noise is to spray that belt material, the belt ribs, with, with water, just with a water mist bottle. And, and normally one of two things are going to happen. Either the belt will continue to make noise and possibly get louder, and in which case we would designate that as, as it's a slip issue. It's, it's a, you need to go down the path of solving how to stop my, my squeal or my, my slip issue, which is tension normally. Or if you spray the belt and the noise immediately disappears, um, but normally as the belt would dry out, it'll, it'll start coming back. That, that is uh, classified as, as a chirp, which is a, uh, usually a pulley misalignment. And, and so what we would recommend is to use the uh, laser alignment gates that, that we have at DACO and, and, and truly make sure that your accessories are lined up properly. And most likely you have a, a pulley that is out of alignment, causing the belt to, to track off and, and then it hard into the, the the next adjacent pulley causing that chirp noise. Same time, and I don't I don't know if a lot of the technicians understand the belt material was changed from neoprene to EPDM, so they're looking for large cracks. These belts can they run so long, and typically the belts already failed before they'll ever see any cracks at all. The cracks in an EPDM belt, with it, which is ethylene propylene dyne class M of rubber. Uh, it, it cracks so slowly and so it's so they're so small they'll never see those so that would be one of the first things to check for if the belt's glazed and shiny it's slipping that that points right back to the tensioner as well killing can become a problem as a belt slip it rolls that material up in the apex of the belt and so uh, you always want to inspect the bottom of the belt for pilling for rib wear, it may be telling you there's misalignment in the system. It can be oil soaked. If it's oil soaked, we have to clean those pulleys. And it's absolutely critical that if you remove that belt to inspect every pulley and clean those at the same time. Because think about it this way. If I have an oil soaked pulley and I go to replace it with a, a belt, that belt with a new belt and I don't clean those pulleys, as soon as you turn the key, it recoats that belt and the failure starts all over again. So uh, there's there's a lot of other issues associated with that. We've got tensioners that are failing. We've got the dampers inside the tensioners that are worn out, that are hammering the system to death now. So, and all of these create noise and vibration. Now, while belt noise might be the most common reason the customers bring their car in for an accessory drive problem, it's still necessary for us to visually inspect the system anytime the car is in for whatever service it might be. It's just one of those things that we owe our customers to perform a visual inspection of any system that if it fails, could cause them a problem. And certainly that qualifies. If a belt fails while the family's out on the family vacation and they're cruising on the highway, they're gonna lose the power steering, they're gonna lose the charging system, they're gonna lose air conditioning, car can overheat when the water pump's not being driven, not good. So let's do a preventative maintenance inspection before we start diving into the causes and cures for belt noise. Okay, the first part of the visual inspection is to start the engine and turn all the accessories on. Then watch the belt track. Make sure it's tracking smoothly on all the pulleys, both the ribbed and any smooth face idler pulleys or, or component pulleys that are on the system. 
Is your track steady and smooth, not wander from side to side, or even be offset on any of the pulleys? And then take a look down at the attentioner if you can get a good shot of that. Make sure it's not bouncing. If you see any bouncing, that's a good indication that the dampener internal to the tensioner is worn out and the tensioner should be replaced. Okay, while the engine's running, if you're dealing with a noise concern, there's a couple of things that you can do. First, red the engine, just flip the throttle a couple of times, see what happens to the noise. If it stays the same or gets worse, odds are you're dealing with a tension issue. It's what the industry calls a squeal. Uh, could be because of a worn belt, worn tensioner, any factor that might allow less tension than should be on that belt. Maybe it's the wrong belt. That's what you want to focus on, though, if you have a squeal. If the noise goes away, well, that's a chirp. That's usually related to alignment of the components. Um, could be from wear, could be worn bearings, or could have been a misinstallation of a component that was recently serviced. You can also check it with a bottle of water. You've got the official Deco bottle right here, and to do this, you're just gonna spray a little water on the rear side of the belt with the engine running. And listen to see what happens to the noise. Now again, same thing. If the noise gets worse or continues about the same, that's a tension related issue, that's a squeal. The noise goes away and then slowly comes back as the water evaporates and dries. That's a chirp, something's out of alignment. A quick word on spraying anything on the belts. Water is okay. Anything that's got a petroleum base is a definite no-no. It's going to cause the EPDM material to degrade very quickly, and you'll end up replacing the belt very soon for another noise. Uh, water's fine. No belt dressings, nothing like that. Uh, if you have to put something like that on there, it's a temporary fix. It's not going to last. It's just going to ruin the, the belt and the new one that you put on. So nothing other than water for when you're doing this test. Um, one other thing I want you to think about, think of those serpentine belts as just like the tires on the car. They work by friction, by having the right tension and a good contact between the ribs and grooves and the mating pulleys in order to transfer all that power to these different components. So if there's wear there, even as much as 5% wear, that can cause these belts to slip on these different components. And when that happens, there's an excessive heat load in all of those components. There's excess wear on the alternator. There's excess heat load on the bearings and the power stump pump pulley, the, uh, the accessory drive pulleys. All of that has a lot harder job to do when the belt slips, even just a little bit. And as I mentioned earlier, you can't go by just looking at the belt, looking for those cracks that we used to see back in the old days. These belts don't do it that often. In fact, if you see a belt now made out of the EPDM material that has a crack in it, it was shot a long time ago. Now, as I said, checking the belt can't go by just a visual inspection of it anymore. You actually need a special tool to do it. The neat thing is all the aftermarket belt companies, they make these little special tools and they give them away. You can probably get them down at your local parts supply, but if you have any trouble getting them from them, just look at the links that are at the end of this video. Ask them for one directly. I'm sure they'll be glad to send you plenty. Now, while we can't do it with the belt installed, in order to be able to show it to you guys, it's going to be a little easier if I go ahead and remove this belt and uh, show you a little close up exactly how that gauge works. So give me a minute and I'll get that belt right off. Now as a note, down here in Florida, it's kind of hot, so I'm sweating just a little bit. But when you're using the tool to get the belt tensioner off, you can use a, a ratchet and socket if you have clearance or a belt tensioner tool like this one, a uh, little, little thinner design, allows you to get in a little tighter spots. Make sure that you get a good firm grip on the tensioner. Look up the service information, exactly how that tension is supposed to be released. And be aware, it's under a lot of spring pressure. So make sure you know where your hands are gonna go in case that thing slips. Also, make sure that you have a uh, diagram for the belt routing so that when you go back to put it back on, you put it back on right in the right way. Uh, usually you'll find these right up under the hood. And uh, like in fact, there's one right here or in your service information system. But if you lack either one, then take the time to take a piece of paper and, and draw out a rough one so that you know how it goes. Okay, there she is.
Okay, now, as I said, there's a lot of uh, little gauges out there. Everybody makes one. These are from uh, the folks at Deco. And uh, the way it works is actually three different little checks we're going to make. Go, no go kind of a decision. Uh, so it's really easy. Let's uh, get up close here so you can see. There is my belt. The first uses what they call the crown side or the tooth side of the tool. You can see that here. We're just going to lay that in the grooves and we're going to see if there's any motion side to side. If there is, time for a new belt. The next step is we're going to take the little rod you see on the end and we're going to lay that flat in the groove. And then we're going to run our finger over it. So we're getting a so you can see that. Run our finger over it. As long as that extends above the surface of the ribs, we're okay. If it's below the surface of the ribs, again, time for a new belt. And the second is a one inch square viewing window. This is where we're gonna look for cracks. If there is any cracks in that window as you check along the belt, time for a new belt. In fact, way past time for a new belt. This is also a great visual tool to show your customer why you're recommending the replacement belt that you are. And keep in mind that this is a system. The belt and the tensioner are designed to work together. So if the belt's worn out, guess what? Tensioner should be replaced as well. Generally, these belts will last 90, 100,000 miles, as long as everything is okay on the rest of the system. Common problem, fluid contamination from some leak. Maybe it's oil, power steering, brake fluid, something else that's leaked under the pulleys and contaminated the belt. Uh, in that case, when you check those pulleys, make sure you clean them thoroughly. Correct the problem, uh, the source of the fluid contamination before you install a new belt and pronounce it fixed. Now, also available in the aftermarket, are tools to help you find the source of misalignment. Um, just for demonstration purposes, we're gonna show you here at these upper pulleys where it's a little easier for you to see. But it's a laser gauge, and the one gauge is gonna be placed, it should be placed on the harmonic balancer pulley, since that is gonna be your, your um, source, your source point. And we wanna make sure we get it lined up in the center of that pulley grooves. And then we're gonna place the target on all the other pulleys in the system and rotate it to see if they line up. And you see that's pretty good. So these two pulleys are lining up just fine. Again, let me clarify, I may have the light on the uh, AC compressor pulley. It should be on the harmonic balancer pulley, the engine, end of the engine crankshaft. And from there, all the other pulleys checked using the target. So we just move this from one to the other to make sure that they all line up. When you see that it starts to be angled or off to the left or right, well, there's your culprit. That's the pulley that's out of alignment. That's the one you need to focus on. Hey, well, no doubt the accessory drive belt, serve belt, sure has got a tough job to do, and it does it under some very adverse conditions. But you know what? It can do the job with a little help from professional technicians like you. Following proper inspection techniques, you can ensure that your customer doesn't have a problem with a belt failure or noise by following some of the tips that we showed you in today's video. Uh, still a lot more. Stay tuned. There's some great resources that you'll find links to at the end of the video, but I'm hearing that thunder and lightning going on outside. I need to get this belt on and get my butt home. That's going to do it for me. I'll see you next month.